Hi everybody, I'm Jim Skelly and this is The Global Conversation. Um, this is the first of my many lectures uh, for the fall of 2011 and uh, there are some that are posted on the website from last semester. We'll be replacing those with updated uh, mini lectures as we go along over the next couple of months. Um, but I wanted to welcome all of you once again. I've, I've sent some information to a few of the cohorts of students who've joined us so far. We're just about complete with um, the enrollment of students. We still have a cohort of students to join us from the Institute for Social and European Studies in Hungary. Uh, but just a few days ago, I met face to face with the students here at the University of Ulster in the north part of Ireland uh, who have joined the course. And we have a cohort of 15 students there. So it looks like, uh, you know, it, we could have close to 100 students in the class this semester. Um, and I have to say, right from the beginning, that I'm already delighted by the uh, dynamic and engaged um, uh, course discussions that many of you have started. It's exactly what we hope you will do, and I would encourage everybody to join those discussions as the spirit moves you. Um, this is a very important part of it, and I want to, to thank uh, Yeva in Lithuania who uh, started a, a very critical and very excellent discussion on the story of stuff. Um, uh, uh, very interesting, and I, I, there, there are substantial criticisms to be made of this video, uh, and I'm glad to see that that was done, and I hope you'll do that with everything that we're discussing throughout the, the semester. I, I did, there was one point uh, I wanted to come back to with regard to the story of stuff, and this has to do with uh, Sadie Lutmer's uh, comments. Sadie is one of the teaching assistants uh, for the course. She's now based in Washington, D.C., having finished her uh, studies at the University of Minnesota. Um, and Sadie made a point that we need to integrate various information sources. We need to think about where the data comes from. We cannot just have opinions. Hmm? A friend of mine, when I was in graduate school, in fact, one of my professors at the time, said that she divided the world into two kinds of people. There were people with opinions, and then there was another group of people, and they had opinions with data. And that's what I want to encourage with you. We need data. Hmm? Uh, this is a, a terribly important uh, issue. And uh, I hope you'll really, really engage with this. Now, um, one of the things, um, another uh, point around this issue is um, uh, with regard to the story of cosmetics. Um, you know, I, I'm, I've stopped using makeup. Uh, pro probably I could use it. No, but to, to be really serious about it for a minute. When I encountered this aspect of what we're discussing, I, have, I went back to a time. Many years ago, I served as a special assistant for a couple of years to a United States center, senator. Uh, he was the U.S. senator from California. His name was John Tunney. And at the time I was working for the senator, the United States Senate was considering a new law that would regulate toxic substances. It was called the Toxic Substances Control Act. And what became very evident is that the companies that produce cosmetics and other, uh, it, 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 you know, petrochemical based um, uh, items, and there are tens of thousands of them, would prefer not to go through uh, an intense regulatory process. In a certain way, implicit in their orientation is that they can produce these new chemical compounds, and essentially they put them out into the public realm and test them on you corollary situation with Reebok shoes. 
Um, some of you may have seen these easy toning shoes, which are made to supposedly make you more fit. So take a look at the case of Reebok toning shoes. These toning shoes are apparently meant to strengthen your muscles, and they cause you um, pain in certain parts of your body, and you're meant to think that these are helping you to become more fit. Uh, they're designed to be slightly unstable, um, and, um, uh, you know, the, the data wasn't there to support this. So Reebok is now having to pay $25 million for the claims that have been made against them, uh, which suggests that they had no serious data for toning shoes. I'll send you a, a link to an article about this uh, so that you can follow it. But it's the kind of thing that you want to be attentive to when it comes to um, any product that you're buying. At one level, this class is about helping you to become conscious. It doesn't mean all of the data that you will receive is accurate, but it means that you should know. You should know what you're putting on your body, in your body, what you're breathing, what the character of your water is. Because in point of fact, there are many people who produce items that they want to sell to you for, to make some money, which may not, in fact, be good for you. So the orientation towards profit at any cost, regardless of health, etc., and we've seen this with various chemicals over the years, DDT, etc., one of the big issues around food, as some of you know, is genetically modified food, and it's a complicated issue. So you want to be conscious, and that's, in a, in a certain way, what we're trying to do in this class. Um, now, I also want to emphasize to all of the students, uh, who we're all getting to know each other, never, ever hesitate to get in touch with me. If you have uh, concerns and you want to just discuss it with me personally, one-to-one, -one, I'm glad to do that. And we can even set up a Skype conference call if you... Uh, uh, you know, have the capacity to use Skype, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, so let's, let's have as much discussion as possible. Now, um, one of the other things that Yeva at LCC International said um, that I, 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 it's perfect comment. Uh, she made a comment about, you know, if I have enough money to spend, why can't I buy whatever I want? Well, that's absolutely true at one level of analysis. But the question is, is what you're buying always ethically produced? So one of the things I have uh, set up for you this week is a course discussion specifically orientated towards an analysis of some of the, quote, stuff that you have. I'm as big a sinner as anyone in this regard, I have to say. I probably have too much stuff. Um, you know, uh, shirts, things like this, you know, things I don't always need, but I think, oh God, I'll look gorgeous in that, right? <laughs> the usual stupidities. But what I'd like you to do, and I'll, I'll provide information in the email that we sent to you uh, uh, in, in association with this posting, uh, what I'd like you to do is take a number of items from different aspects of uh, your collection of items and get a sense for where they are produced and then post that in this special course discussion that I've created uh, for uh, the course this fall, okay? So please do that and do that if you can within the next 10 days so that the next time um, I post a mini lecture um, we can discuss it and also uh, go to part two of this little exercise, all right? Um, now, uh, so it, it's an analysis basically of where does your stuff come from. Now, a couple of other things. Um, uh, there are some readings that I really would like to emphasize for you. Very early on, you'll find a short piece that we've created called uh, from the author C. Wright Mills. C. Wright Mills was a famous U.S. Uh, sociologist, and Mills, in his book, The Sociological Imagination, 
makes a very important distinction which informs much of what we discuss here in this class. Mills talks about the distinction between private troubles and public issues. That distinction is meant to get you to think in terms of the context, the social structure. So I hope you'll take a look at that reading and really think about its implications. For example, when we see somebody unemployed, as Mills points out, we often think, well, it's their character, they're lazy or something like that. And Mills says that's the correct assumption if, in fact, it's one person out of 500 who is unemployed. But if 250 or so are unemployed out of 500, we have to look at social structure, at how the economy, in this case, is organized. Right? So those are the kinds of things that we want to keep in mind, that, and how the economy is organized is about social structure, in this case, the economic social structure. So you want to think about that uh, quite a bit, because throughout this class, we're going to emphasize the importance of the context, the context within which food is produced, the context within which cosmetics are produced, the context for energy, etc., etc. So pre please take a look at that. And then finally, today, I want to emphasize um, uh, that you should be choosing uh, which learning circle you would like to participate in. On the left-hand side of the uh, course webpage, you will find um, uh, learning circle guidelines. Hmm? Uh, the, they're, they're up on the top, just to the to the near near the left, uh, near the top on the left. Um, Learning Circle Guidelines list a number of uh, areas in which uh, you might participate. I think there are eight of them there. We would like you to send us your rank-ordered list. In other words, take the top three that you'd like to participate in and indicate what your strength of feeling is with regard to them. So say it's climate change uh, and you really want to do that. So number one is the strongest, right? Uh, consumerism and globalization. Maybe uh, you only have a feeling of four for that, you know, rank order uh, according to one to five. So just choose your top three and then tell how strongly you want to participate. We're going to create those learning circles over the next couple of weeks. Once the students in Hungary from, who come from various countries um, uh, join us and um, We'd like to start setting them up straight away. So please do that, and then you send a copy uh, to me uh, and to Jenna Goodhand, who is the assistant course coordinator. Again, let me emphasize that if you have any issues that you would like to bring up, please do so um, throughout uh, the semester. And I really am glad to meet with you at any time on Skype and have a, a a larger discussion about some of the issues. All right, I'll be posting these about once a week. Um, I hope all is going well wherever you're studying. Uh, all the best, and I'll look forward to a, a very exciting semester, I think. Bye-bye.